A lot of news around today, a lot of big news out of Canberra too, but this one came right out of the blue. Let's cross to the Nationals leader, David Littleproud at Parliament House. Thanks for joining us, David. Uh, big surprise from you today to come out as a, as a party, the Nationals federally, and oppose the voice. Up until now, you've been calling for more detail. You haven't got that detail. Why wouldn't you wait till you see more detail before making up your mind? Uh, with respect, we have been garnering that detail by thorough consultation, particularly with those that were the architect of the Uluru Statement of the Heart. I made sure that uh, we gave them the opportunity to be able to articulate uh, what the, the voice would look like and the mechanics of it. And in fact, on the weekend, uh, there were numerous articles that really aligned with that, with what the government was saying would be uh, what they would be proposing in terms of the mechanics. So uh, we went through a very, a very strenuous uh, process to make sure that we were genuine in trying to understand that would this close the gap? And particularly... But the, but the government... The uh, the, just let me interrupt, because the government has yet to put out a draft bill about what their voice would look like. They've put out their proposed uh, referendum change, of course, which, in my view, is the most critical detail, because Parliament can change the rest. But they haven't put out even a, a draft bill for how they would shape a voice or even any principles around that. They haven't even told people whether the government will fund the, 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 the yes and no cases in a referendum. Uh, it just seems that there's so much... More more to come. I think they've been very tardy on that. I criticise Anthony Albanese and Linda Burney for not getting more detail out there or advocating strongly, but I just would have thought you might have waited to see some of that before making up your mind, as Peter Dutton seems to be doing. No, with respect, uh, the government's made it clear that this will in some way emulate the old ATSIC model, uh, which we've, we've had validated through n a number of participants uh, in the round tables in what would be brought forward. Uh, so we've made sure we've calmly worked through that and understanding what will uh, be uh, the mechanics and unfortunately what we believe is this won't shift the dial on changing the dial uh, in closing the gap, particularly uh, for those in regional, rural and remote. Uh, and that's the, the lens in which we uniquely look at this uh, in that we need to make sure that those voices are heard and that there are that local communities in those particular this, areas are this in argument. But that empowered. argument, that, I heard you make that argument, I heard you make that argument today and it's, to me, a particularly contradictory argument because you're saying you're opposing no, like this. I mean, you, 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 you let me just explain. Let, no, 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 I'll, I'll put the, I'll put well, the argument, then you question. respond. Yeah, well, here's the question. I find it particularly contradictory. Here, I find it particularly contradictory because you're saying you oppose the voice because it won't work, yet everybody agrees what we're doing now hasn't been working. You're saying we need voices from grassroots communities. That's precisely what this Indigenous voice is supposed to try and deliver. Yeah, well, Chris, and this is... If you'll let me answer the question, and, and I'll do it, um, I understand your premise of, of your debate. Uh, what I'm saying is, unfortunately, this will send very few from very large areas here... Uh, when what we believe is that those voices should be heard locally at a local level, government should be flipped on its head, is that we should be empowering these local communities. Because you know what, Chris? A local community in my election, in one part of my election, will have different needs to the other, such is the vastness. Now, while well, you, you know, get to but, but you know that there's a regional, there's local, regional and national voices. You know that. Chris, Chris, do you want me to answer this or do you want to just tell me your point of view? Um, well, hang on a second. You, you, cut, you, you cut me off in the middle of my question. I'm jumping in to say that. You're saying you want local and well, regional voices heard. You know that's part of the plan, isn't it? Chris, with respect, as I say, you know, this is off the ATSIC models and please, uh, I'm sure you're well informed to be able to go and understand what that would look like in terms of a representative model and the, and the few voices that will come to Canberra. What we're saying is you shouldn't have to add another layer of bureaucracy to come to Canberra. Canberra should go to you and in, in this is where we need to flip the empowerment of these local communities uh, to be able to shift the dial on an economic sense, whether that be through the use, the land use of, of their lands, whether that be through the continuation of the programs that we put in place around local Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander procurement that put $5.3 billion into these communities and employed 10,000 people. It was about the cashless debit card that we put in place to protect these communities that they took away because they felt that it would take away the dignity of some people in these communities. They're taking, they might be taking away the dignity of those perpetrators. But what about the dignity of those young children 
knows yeah. women. We all understand okay, the problems, the failures. That's the point. This well, is about the future. The, these failures are unforgivable. Then if you, you're going to oppose the voice, what are you going to propose doing differently that might actually uh, improve the, some of the situations we're talking about? Well, well, I'll enunciate it again, Chris. This is about empowering those local communities at a local level because each one of those, even within the regions in which they'll be talking about, will have vastly different challenges but also opportunities. And by limiting it to a couple of voices from these regions to come into Canberra uh, to, to talk around and then go back, it should be flipped on its head in that we empower. And to put in place a mechanism that's enshrined in the Constitution that effectively, if it doesn't work, we have locked ourselves and future generations of young uh, Indigenous Australians into a model that doesn't, doesn't work, I think, doesn't doesn't pass the, the, the test of trying to close the gap. Now, we, we've looked at this genuinely, Chris. We're not, we're not here trying to, to do anything destructive. We're being constructive in understanding that the people that we represent have, have a different set of needs and circumstances. And you know what? The people in my party room are the ones that have walked a mile in it, and particularly people like Jacinta Price, who've lived these experiences uh, so while you might have a capital city view, uh, let me tell you, this shouldn't be about a few. This should be about a full community. Well, you know, full you know, you know, full well, you, you, you know, you know, you know full well the that there's a lot of consultation has gone into this. You can't say this is a no, capital city view. Yeah, for, 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 honestly, now just since today well, talked well, well, about well, not well, being governed by a voice. You know that no voice well, well, is governing anybody. It's about advice. Now, but with, with respect, Chris, um, let me tell you, I rang a large number of my traditional owners, elders. And you know what? Some of them didn't even know what it was. They live in Western Queensland. So let me, let me just challenge you on the consultation piece. Many of them had no idea what it was at all, have had not even well, Why would that surprise you? Why say, would that surprise you? I could walk down the street from here and ask gonna... a bunch of people and they give me the same answer. But, Chris, you, you just told me that it was all about con the consultations being extensive. It hasn't. No, you tried and, and to tell me this was a this capital nation. city idea versus the regions. And, and you know full well that a lot of work under your previous government and Labor and, and other organisations, there have been a lot, of, a lot of consultation right around the country. It's just I'm not going to let a fallacy no, no. stand no, uncontested. No, sorry, with respect, no, well, with respect, Chris, unfortunately these communities haven't had a say. Uh, and they're, they're being put into a model that <laughs> well, unfortunately won't give them an increased say. It allowed another layer of bureaucracy rather than empowering them at a local level. Uh, and that's why I'm saying that, you know, we're, we're not being standing here being obstructionists. We're being here looking at through the lens, the lens of the communities that we represent. And in Jacinda's case, someone's experienced much of the disadvantage that needs not, to be fixed and much not, of the programs we're that not we're going to start, in place. We're not going to start and end the debate here. It's going to go on for many, many months. But it's, it's just fascinating to hear you say that one of the reasons you want, you're opposed to this idea of giving Indigenous people a voice is because you think there are some Indigenous people who haven't been given a voice in deciding how to construct the voice. Chris, no, I'm saying now, let me go back to what I said about four minutes earlier, is that what will happen is that there will be very few that will come down and be part of this voice. And when you look at the sheer, the sheer size and scale of, the, of this country, when you look at that and you, and you overlay that, then there are few voices that will be heard rather than it going back to the people, flipping this on its head and government having the agility to right. be within these local communities. We will to see be able um, to empower them with their local solution, not with one that has to come through a bureaucracy in Canberra. I we will see where all the debate sense. goes. Thanks so much for joining us, David. Little proud. I appreciate it.